Paul and I never, ever thought that consciousness wasn't real. I mean, of course it's real. The question is whether it emerges from neuronal activity or not. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's one thing. And but the other thing about eliminative materialism was this, that we had the idea that some psychological theories about how we work use concepts that are really very ancient and old and quite serviceable in their way. Mm. But that as we come to know more and more about the nature of the brain, some of those concepts are going to change and be revised. Yes. And so, uh, and, and, and of course, memory is the great case in point. We already know now, I mean, many neuroscientists don't talk about memory anymore. They talk about kinds of plasticity because there are so many different kinds of systems that play a role in this sort of plasticity and learning and that sort and this sort and that sort and so forth. So um, that's kind of a comment about, um, about eliminative materialism. And I just should say as an aside, when we were talking about these things initially, and when I was initially up to my years in neuroscience, we were at the University of Manitoba. We were little nothing bald nobodies. And Paul wanted to publish this paper saying our concepts may be revised and changed in the way that we got rid of the idea of caloric fluid, for example, or the idea that there are two levels of physics, supra, uh, sublunary and superlunary. And, and he, had, he felt, because this was really the culture of philosophy at that time, that you had to kind of give this approach a name. And so we kind of went through the literature and there was Richard Rorty, who was very famous and who was at Princeton, who had something like a similar idea. And he called his idea eliminative materialism. And Paul thought, well, that's probably good enough, even though that's not really what we're talking about. And so he called it that. And um, <laughs> of course, in retrospect, we wished we hadn't called it anything. <laughs> but then, in, you know, in philosophy in those days, if you didn't have an ism, well, you know, nobody paid any attention to you. So that was thing one. And thing two is we really should have called it revisionary materialism, meaning that, you know, the old framework is likely to be revised in just the ways that we are seeing that it actually is now being revised. Um, so that was kind of the story. I mean, it's, you know, like a story of a lot of life where certain decisions seem like they're really major and it turns out it was because you couldn't find your socks mm. uh, <laughs> and all kinds of minor things play into decisions that come to be viewed later as as very major